So I think uh, you're ready to go. Oyan is going to be talking about hypotheses with PyTest, so I think it's really interesting talk. So it's all yours. Good luck. Okay. Uh, first of all, thanks everybody for coming. Uh, this is my first uh, talk ever, uh, so please be gentle. I'll be going over some, the Django testing, especially using PyTest and hypothesis for test uh, generation. We're going to see how we can make uh, thousands of tests with uh, relatively small uh, code. Now, uh, my name is Bojan Miletic. Uh, I'm the founder of Terrific. I've been working as Python developer for more than a decade, and I absolutely love talking about uh, Python. So. You can connect with me on LinkedIn uh, or on email. Uh, sorry, but I'm not very active on other social networks. So uh, during this presentation, we're going to cover uh, PyTest, PyTest uh, Django plugin. And after that, uh, we're going to move to using uh, PyTest parameterization to generate text uh, tests. After that, we are going to add hypothesis into the mix and see how far we can go. Uh, uh, main point uh, to, to mention is that uh, we're going to be focusing on PyTest and hypothesis, uh, but uh, this is something you can apply to basically everything. Uh, any kind of Python script function, uh, it's we are talking about in the context of Django, but it's pretty much uh, usable everywhere. Uh, since we only have half an hour, we're not going to go much into the dev because PyTest, uh, PyTest, Django, hypothesis, uh, good practices and stuff like that uh, on its own would take much more time. So I'm just gonna give you a brief uh, overview of the things and hopefully get you interested uh, to start uh, discovering more things on your own. Uh, if you have any questions later, feel free to ask me. I'll be on the channel and let's get started. Uh, for this example, I decided to make a website for keeping track of unicorns. Basically, we're going to add new unicorn and list added unicorns. Uh, we're going to focus basically on just one endpoint. And uh, I believe uh, we can generate tons of huge number of tests uh, for that endpoint. Uh, before testing, some of the good practices is that you know what you're building. Sometimes uh, when you're a programmer, you're going to get a specification and clearly define inputs, outputs, and that's perfectly fine. But uh, when you're doing project on your own, uh, take some more time uh, before jumping into the code. It can save you quite a lot of time. Also, uh, since uh, in this project, uh, we're going to be working uh, as REST API, you want to write API specification and then consult your front-end team uh, or some other uh, person. Based, uh, when writing API, it's quite helpful to have uh, multiple persons. Okay, and once we have uh, API specification set, then we know what we need to do. As you can see, uh, here's the example of the endpoint we are going to be using. It uh, uses just two parameters, color and the name for the unicorn. And it returns uh, status code uh, 201 when it has successfully added unicorn to the database or 400 if we mess something up. Uh, what we're going to do is make sure to generate as much uh, as much as possible uh, 400 responses. Basically, try not to crash the server and get uh, some 500 error. Uh, for our unicorn model, uh, it's very very simple. I try to focus mostly on the testing side, uh, which made my uh, Django site a bit weaker. We have uh, one uh, anum uh, for the colors and then some limitation, pretty simple. So the name uh, must be at least uh, two letters long and at max 30 letters long. 
Now, when writing tests, a uh, big, big number of tests is going to be located on the, lim the domain limitations of a specific uh, uh, value. For example, in the name, if there is some kind of error, it's going to happen either on a, a character that is uh, two, uh, two characters, a text that is two characters long, one character long, uh, 30 characters long and 31 characters long. Also, we're going to test the uh, empty strings. Those are some extremes uh, and they cover 99% of the errors that happen. It's quite unlikely that we are going to have some sort of error with a string that is uh, length of 10. So always focus on the extremes. And uh, now we can start with our simple uh, test. Uh, in this uh, first test, we are sending just empty data. For that, we expect uh, our backend uh, API to return us uh, a simple error and tell us we are not doing fine. Error 400, invalid request. Uh, ideally, when you are returning uh, requests, uh, you want to provide uh, some text in the body of the request. Basically, tell your front end friends. Uh, what they need to do to fix this. Uh, but since we are doing as minimalistically as possible for this, uh, we're just returning status code, uh, nothing more. And the next one is basically checking if the client is, uh, uh, if the unicorn is successfully added. Now, uh, one thing I will mention, you can see that we have some uh, nice fixtures in PyTest. Uh, that's the client and client uh, DB. Uh, now, uh, that's all thanks to Py, uh, test uh, Django plugin. Client will allow us to basically use uh, Django as we would use the normal uh, request library or something like that. As you can see, I'm not calling the view uh, function directly, but using the URL, which is quite handy. And uh, a database uh, fixture uh, in the second text uh, test is basically telling us that uh, this test will need access to database, otherwise it's going to crash. So those are the two fixtures that you're probably going to use the most. On to the next things. And here's our simple view. Uh, basically, I created a class-based uh, view. Uh, since in normal situation, we're not going to have just post. Uh, we're going to have uh, get, delete uh, options and a bunch of other stuff. But for now, just post. Uh, if you can see, uh, my validated validation here is basically just checking if the dictionary is empty. If yes. Uh, return uh, HTTP uh, 400, bad request, which is perfectly fine because my test here is passing. And afterwards, I'm just saving it, and it's all good. When uh, doing TDD, it's very important uh, to not get ahead of yourself. I love writing tests uh, that fail. Because when you write a test that passes right away, you don't know if your test uh, has any errors in it, uh, if you're testing it wrong, or if everything's perfectly fine. It's much easier to debug when you uh, have test crashes, then you fix the code. Okay, and now we're going to use uh, PyTest parameters. Uh, it works quite simply. Basically, just type this, uh, give it the name of the parameter, which is going to param be parameterized. Here it is the key, and the list of values. Uh, now, uh, as you can see in this uh, example here, it's very, very basic. But the idea is uh, we don't want to repeat the code. We could easily split this into two tests one that has only a name in the request and one that has only color in the request. Like this, we only have uh, one test. It's quite trivial in this example, but when you have a much more complex request structure, it's going to save you quite a lot of time. Also regarding the PyTest mark parameters, uh, you can supply multiple uh, parameters that you wish. Uh, 
uh, behind the key in the as a first parameter you can just uh, add comma and list the second parameter and instead of the list of values it's going to be a list of tuples that are the same length if now it, as the number of parameters okay so um, next thing we're going to do is uh, once we added test uh, that validate uh, structure of the request is basically try to send some uh, junk data to our uh, endpoint because uh, also one good tip when testing is that uh, majority of your tests are going to be located at the borders of your system that means uh, you're going to have to extensively test uh, your API where you are receiving response requests uh, from the user and the third party libraries that you are using where you are sending requests and receiving responses. Uh, since uh, in majority of the cases we're going to uh, get the uh, wild stuff from our front end team, which would be using this API, but uh, they might get something wrong or some kind of malicious user is going to send us uh, some crazy stuff that we are not expecting. Uh, for that, uh, we need to try throwing everything uh, at the API and hopefully getting just error 400, which is user request is invalid. Uh, what we don't want to do is get error 500, uh, which is a series of errors that uh, correspond to server uh, crashes and stuff like that. Basically, we want to be able to gracefully handle every exception possible. Uh, now, uh, as you can see, we got uh, from here uh, three tests above uh, from this, uh, we got two tests. So that's five tests and we just wrote uh, two. And it's time for uh, hypothesis. Now, uh, hypothesis is a property-based testing library. It uh, uses uh, Haskell as a... Mm, is a starting point and it had quite a lot of uh, good stuff that we can use. Basically in hypothesis, you specify your strategy. Here we are saying name is going to be a text and the text uh, is going to be uh, minimum size two and max size 30. Uh, the same thing uh, we got uh, when we define the field for the name. Now, uh, usually what's going to happen is uh, we could write, for example, uh, in PyTest parameterize, uh, just uh, pass the range of uh, values as the string length from uh, 2 to 30 and basically multiply character uh, A or B uh, by that number and get the string length, uh, which is good and which is going to work. But uh, like almost every single web input that requires text, uh, we're going to get Unicode. And uh, Hypothesis is going to provide us with a bunch of crazy stuff. ASCII text, Unicode text, uh, characters invalidly formatted ASCII inputs. And what we want to make sure is that we get uh, status code 201, that everything is in the database, as it should be. Uh, if we are doing some pre-processing, lots of time, this is where we're going to catch Unicode, uh, Unicode errors with the text. Okay, uh, now that we have successfully tested uh, this case, uh, we want to test all the invalid uh, cases as well. For example, we can uh, set up uh, one uh, strategy for text uh, that is using uh, maximal size of string one. It's basically going to zero and one. It's not as quite uh, complex in this case, uh, but I'm just asking for a little bit of abstraction because you can apply this to pretty much anything. Also, <laughs> Okay. Um, next thing, uh, we are also going to add uh, te uh, tests that are outside of maximum size. Uh, that will allow us to test 
also a bunch of crazy stuff. Now, uh, the reason uh, we are me, uh, we are limiting the size, we are not putting uh, ten thousand or some uh, other stuff, is because the in SQL when you define a field, it has a fixed uh, size in memory. Okay. Uh, with this, uh, we did some basic, basic overview of hypothesis, PyTest, and PyTest parameters. Now, uh, I'm open to the questions. Uh, feel free to ask me anything, and that way I can go more into uh, depth regarding concepts that interest you. So, for for anyone who wanted to ask questions, there is there is a Q and A button, mm -hmm. and they need to click there and and, and ask the question. It's also possible if you click in the right hand and it can enable audio for, for the question. So if anyone wants to ask, that's uh, now is the time. So thank you very much. Okay. Okay, any questions? Hmm. My presentation was so good that nobody had yeah, any additional are. question. <laughs> You were, seems that you were really, really good. We have a couple of questions, actually. Oh, we have two now, we have two now, yeah. okay. So, yes. uh, one person is asking, what is the, at given decorator? Oh, yes, I can explain that. Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. Uh, given decorator is provided by hypothesis. You're basically uh, telling here, uh, like we did here with pi parameter, as we're telling this function, uh, we're gonna supply multiple uh, values for the name. And here uh, we are saying, uh, okay, hypothesis is going to supply you multiple values for the name and generate it. By default, uh, this is going to supply you 100 uh, different kinds of text that uh, correspond to these parameters. Uh, there's you can use uh, another decorator about this uh, to set it to a higher or lower number. So this is the hypothesis decorator. Okay. okay. So the other question is, um, what's your feeling? Or what's what's your thought about PyTest versus PyUnit? If you have any opinion there. Uh, well, when. It's a difficult question for me because uh, when I started, I was using uh, unit testing and it was pretty much similar like in uh, other frameworks for me. But when I started using PyTest, uh, it felt more uh, Pythonic uh, to me. Uh, tests are much prettier and I like the fixtures and a bunch of other stuff that get uh, provided here. So. I prefer using PyTest uh, mostly because uh, it's my kind of the style of programming. Uh, I don't think you can get uh, wrong with uh, unit tests as well. An important thing is to have tests. Uh, find the framework that works best for you. Uh, one plus side for PyTest is that it has plugins for pretty much anything. I'm not sure what's the situation with unit tests. Okay. okay. So next question is uh, how you define the number of cases the hypothesis has to generate? Oh, uh, yeah. The... Mm -hmm. um, above given, uh, you have uh, another decorator, which I don't know on top of my head. Uh, I'll type into the chat uh, after this. Uh, you can set uh, uh, it's at settings, I believe, and you define number of how much you want. Uh, when running PyTest, uh, you can provide additional argument. Uh, dash dash uh, show hypothesis uh, the script uh, statistics, and it will show you how many uh, tests it has generated uh, mm -hmm. for you. So uh, please write me in the chat uh, channel and I will uh, send you the code the examples and we can discuss further if you like. Okay. Yeah, so I, I, I was going to repeat that there is a talk Django testing and I shared that that's the channel that you can follow the discussion. So one more question. 
Um, Robert is asking, do you have any recommendations for applying tests on existing code base? Yes. Now, this is something that uh, happens quite often. Uh, you get the code base uh, that has absolutely zero tests. Uh, first of all, before you even touch the code, you are not going to start with tests uh, like this. You're going to have to start with functional testing. Basically, start large. Uh, test uh, entire system and outputs to make sure you don't break anything. Uh, large functionality. Uh, and once you get that down, then you can start uh, moving code around then you modify a little bit of code, write the test for that, see if anything breaks down. Uh, don't start with the functions, start big. Uh, that's uh, the way I did it and it usually works. Uh, so, uh, because that way you discover, oh, in my local setup, I'm missing this uh, sort of library. They did something crazy in the production. Uh, I also need that. So first start with a large functional test. Uh, I would even go so far to recommend Sel uh, Selenium for that. And then uh, get smaller and smaller. Uh, it's when you usually get a code base that doesn't have any tests, uh, coding standards are not quite high. So you might get a function that has, uh, I don't know, 1,000 lines of code. The max that I saw was 5,000 lines of code and uh, 45 input parameters. Stuff like that, uh, you cannot uh, start uh, to break apart until you have uh, dozens of tests uh, that test existing behavior. Mm -hmm. And only that uh, you can start uh, slowly breaking down into smaller pieces. Okay? Cool, cool, thank you. So I have one question more from uh... Discord, Javier is asking, in case you need to test with more complex inputs, like a self-made object, how would hypothesis handle this? Uh, if it's a Django uh, model, hypothesis uh, has a very nice support for that. You basically just tell it to use this model and it will generate a, a random uh, values for that model and supply it. Uh, you can also make your own strategies for generation, link uh, multiple strategies together. Uh, for example, uh, if I wanted uh, to add more unicorns here, I would use, uh, I could use a name and uh, color as uh, input parameters for hypothesis. Okay, good. So we have more questions, so I'm going to continue because we have a few minutes. Uh, Jennifer is in, okay, it seems that she, she missed some part because it was a three-year-old person no. <laughs> interrupting. So how did you generate the 400 tests? Uh, here. Uh, well, uh, when you say given, uh, that uh, declarator basically tells, okay, I'm going to turn this, uh, provide, uh, I'm going to use this strategy to generate various values for the name. And by default, it's 100 uh, uh, values. So this uh, piece of the code that is currently on the screen, uh, that is 100 uh, test. Yeah, you can set it up above and it will generate uh, 400 various uh, tests. Now the text uh, field, which I really, really like in the strategies for hypothesis, uh, will try to break your code in ways you didn't think it was possible because it will throw Unicode, uh, ASCII, characters uh, that are invisible, stuff like that. Uh, also invalidly formatted Unicode. Basically, all the crazy stuff you can expect from your users. Uh, I hope that answers it. I, I think it does. Okay, last one. Last one because we already like 10. Um, Daniel is asking, he's saying he, he, he always has the impression that testing something 
a lot of times does doesn't do much more than be a few careful thought like a with the tailored normal test. And he's asking if you have an example when hypothesis was a catching an error. So when hypothesis has code edge cases, like a, because you were doing like a, a really big set of tests. So I think that's the question. Sorry, it was like maybe changing it a bit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, basically, uh, I kind of agree with his approach when you're doing uh, testing inside your own system. Uh, because then you are already, my philosophy is this, you have user input, uh, you have one giant wall, you're going to do lots of data validation and stuff like that. And you, uh, that's going to be most of your tests are going to be concentrated. Uh, inside your system, you can trust it uh, to provide uh, valid inputs and stuff like that. So there you can use uh, carefully designed tests and not treat it as a black box. Uh, if you can see here, uh, I'm never calling the unicorn view. I'm treating it completely as a black box. So from my standpoint of view, uh, if I didn't use uh, PyTest Django, this could be a Flask application or something in Java, anything at all. Uh, does that answer the question? Yeah, I think it does. I think it does. Okay, thank you very much. That was a really nice talk. So I need to play some because. <laughs> I, uh, thank you.